thing is, you know, um, don't you want to know? I mean, don't you want to know what uh, your blood sugar gets to when you eat a certain thing? Now, you know, when you were n newly diagnosed with diabetes, maybe someone said, and this is really more for maybe type 2 patients, but um, someone said, hey, you know what, you can't have that, you can't have this, you can't have pasta, you can't have rice, you can't have cake, you can't have um, chocolate sundaes, right? Or cookies. Stop! Move away right? from the cookie jar! So, I mean, these are things that people have told you you can't have. Now, how do you know or how do they know how that affects you? How do you know? You know, you can you can eat something and just say feel, oh, well, you know, I feel like at 150 or something like that, right? That's, I don't know. I mean, if you can do that, that's great. Uh, but I think most people probably can't. Uh, and the only way to know if that particular food is going to really affect you the way you think it's going to affect you is to, is to test. So, you know, like my favorite food is, uh, is hot dogs and cheeseburgers, right? So I test before the hot dog and two hours after the hot dog and see where my blood sugar is. Does it stay high or does it stay in the range? Is, is my body producing enough insulin to cover that because I'm newly diagnosed? Or, you know, and later on, um, you know, as, as the diabetes progresses in type 2, even type 1, um, as it progresses, you know, you're probably that your body won't be able to tolerate that particular food possibly because it's not giving off the insulin that it needs to cover for that food, right? Um, but how do you know where you are? That's the key. Uh, the only way to w know where you are is by testing. You eat that two hours after you test and, you know, and see where you are. Um, and then who knows? Maybe your blood sugar does stay in a pretty good range even after the things that you love to eat. Say you love Sundays and you eat a small Sunday, you test before and then you test two hours after and where's your blood sugar? You know, if your blood sugar is back in the range that it's supposed to be, hey, you know what? That Sunday ain't, ain't that too bad for me, you know? And everybody's been telling me that, that, that you know, that Sunday is bad for my diabetes, but I have proof. Here's my blood sugar before and then two hours after, and it's in the range that I need it to be, right? So that food really didn't affect your diabetes that bad, at least, you know, you, you have proof. And it probably also means that maybe the medications that you're using are really working well for you. So, I mean, these are all the things that you get to really experience and discover and learn through testing, right? And so the, the, the key word is really discover, to discover the things that you eat and how it affects your diabetes because you can't feel it, right? You can only um, test and, and know. So, um, so, so it's real important. And um, from today on, I'd like to show you the different... Uh, meters that are available, uh, all the different features on them, um, all the, you know, the pros and cons that I see about them, and, uh, and you know, kind of gives you an experience of all the different ones. Because more than likely, if you were diagnosed, you probably got one and said, hey, you know what, this is what you got to use. So maybe the doctor gave that to you, maybe you got it at a health fair, maybe the pharmacy gave it to you and said, okay, that is covered under your insurance, that's the one you got to use. So you really don't know the scope of other uh, testers that are out there. So um, I'm going to be bringing out those, uh, those as we go through, okay? Now, one more thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to testing. You know, testing, again, it's not, it's not the, the most fun thing to do, right? Um, but the way, the way you have to think of your, your diabetes is really um, choices that you make. And the choices that you make, whether, you know, it's, food or whether it's taking your medication or whether it's testing, um, I like to think of it as kisses and hugs, right? Uh, you ask my kids, what is the, m the most uh, valuable thing to me? And, uh, and I always have told them it's kisses and hugs because a true kiss and a true hug is priceless. You cannot buy it and you have to, you have to kind of earn it, right? Um, and it's, it's free, yes. Um, and it's, I think, the most valuable thing in your life uh, because uh, because you do that because you love things, right? You kiss your kids, you kiss your mom, you kiss your wife, uh, you give them hugs. And uh, what I'd like you to think about is when you test or when you actually do anything uh, when it comes to diabetes, make those choices, if you could think of uh, every time you do something as a kiss and a hug to somebody that you love because if you can do that, then you can put some 
meaning behind all this, right? Um, so keep that in mind, kisses and hugs, okay? And we'll go over that more a little bit later. Uh, but, but that's my philosophy on taking care of your diabetes. Every time you make a choice, and hopefully it's a good choice, uh, every time you make a good choice, think of it as a kiss and a hug to your, um, to your uh, family, friends, um, and the loved ones that you have. Because once you do that, uh, you know that every minute or every decision that you make is um, is prolonging your life to a certain degree, and it's uh, saving off the complications. And in in, in you know in, in the long term, um, you're really giving them a kiss and a hug every time you make a good choice. So uh, keep that in mind. Okay. Anyways, um, thanks for joining us on this uh, on this episode. MySugarTV.com. My name is Tony Song, and I will see you next time.